Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hidden Pearls podcast. I have two of the most handsome boys ever sitting on screen with me. Wow, look at that. Flexing their biceps, chewing on chains. We've got things going on bam, bam, over at bam. the Hidden Pearls podcast. So this is a really big week for us. It is Eagles week. It is? It's Eagles week. <laughs> Yep. Get so mind, right? this is uh this is a big week. So let's uh let's give a little play by play on what's going on with the boys. So Niners are on the road again this week after traveling north to play the Seattle Seahawks. While they made it look close in the third quarter, Niners flexed and took care of business, earning the 31 to 13 win. Brock rose to the challenge again, as did CMC and the entire offense. Defense rose, defense rose up as well with six sacks and two turnovers, but all that is in the rearview mirror and old news as the eyes of the Niners have turned towards the East for their rematch with the NFC uh, leading and number one seed, 10-1, and one, the Eagles. While their stats do not overwhelm you, they are a simple team with a lot of mojo and who keep finding ways to win. The last two weeks included wins over the Chiefs on the road and an overtime win with the Bills. Niners will need to be at their best to take a W out of Philly and give them a chance to still earn the number one seed in the NFC. Games in December determine championships run, and here we are. Bam! Here we are. The juice is flowing. Excited. All right, George, great to see you, man. I'm so excited about this week. I got juice flowing, energy flowing, coming out my fingertips. My hair caught on fire twice. I had to put it out. That's why it's like, it looks like a tight cut right now. So anyway, last week, Thursday night, it's old. We're not going to talk very much about it. Everybody knows what happened. We don't care. Right now, as we speak, Seattle is playing Dallas in a really tight one, which we're hoping for them, but that's all good. But anyway, you guys pulled out a 31-13 win. Now 8-3, and three, two games up on Seattle and the NFC West. Always good to win up there. So that was a long time ago. Thursday night football. Tell us a little bit about the week leading up. How was the Thursday night game? We talked a little bit about this, but it was a nice time in the season to get a little bit of a break, probably a couple extra days. How'd the rest go and or how does that impact the prep? Um, you know, I think I've said this before, but the longer I've been in the league, the more I – the more I – there's parts of Thursday night that I really like but there's parts of it that I, I can't stand. Um, I think playing four days after another game is kind of outrageous. Uh, and the fact that they expect you to do that's a lot. Um, I think there's, I feel like there's a lot of injuries on Thursday night football. Like we lost George Odom, unfortunately for um, however many weeks, months that is, uh, you know, who's one of the top special teams players in the NFL. Um, and it's just, it's just very difficult to get your body to bounce back that quickly in a couple of days. Um, you know, it's fine. I was talking to CMC about it. He can't stand Thursday night games and just believes that he goes, just play on Sundays. You don't need to play on Mondays. You don't need to play on Saturdays. You don't need to play on Thursdays. <laughs> just play on Sundays. And I respect that because if you just did it on Sundays, Hey, guess what? You can get in your perfect routine and you can just figure it out every single week. But Hey, you know what? But we don't have that choice. Um, so I'm okay with Thursday night games usually as long as I don't have to travel very far. So like I'm big as long as it's in the division and my flight is less than two hours. Right. Awesome. Fun fact though. I think I can share this on our way to Seattle. Um, something happened and I guess someone filled up the plane with too much gas. And mm. so we were too heavy and we had to fly. We were in the air for an extra like hour and 15 minutes. It was supposed to be an hour and a half flight. It was a two and a half to two forty five flight. And we had to fly all the way over to Idaho and then back to Seattle. Because you and couldn't land with that much fuel? There's if you're too heavy, the plane just can't land. And so they had to it was either burn the fuel or dump it, I guess. And they chose to burn it. And so we we're in the air for an extra hour plus. Right. Because I know you guys were late getting over to the hotel. That's the, yeah, so the whole, we everything, was, everything got jacked up. It was a lot. So um, but hey, here we are. Yeah, was there anarchy? Did. Was there just anarchy on the plane? Well, I I took a nap because I was tired, and mm -hmm. I woke up and it said thirty minutes till landing. I was like, oh, that's nice. I can you know study a little bit, and I'm studying. And then when we landed, I looked at the time. I was like, I swear we're in the same time zone. Like, why? Why am I? Why did we land an hour plus later than we thought we were going to? And then someone told me that. I was like, oh, okay. wow, wow. 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 wow! All the little things, all the little things that can pop up. Hey, the Niners. Hey, we're resilient. Uh, we dealt with it. 
went straight to our meetings, had a good game, yeah. won Thursday night football, eating turkey legs in Seattle is always fantastic. The awesome. whole week leading up to the game, I had 49ers fans sending me and tagging me in photos of Richard Sherman and Russell Wilson. In 2014, they won on Thanksgiving in Levi's Stadium, and they ate turkey legs on our 50-yard line. And everyone mm-hmm. said, hey, you guys have to do this to them. And I'm happy that they sent that to me because I'm glad that I I'm glad that I saw that. Um, so I appreciate you all you fans out there. You guys invest. But, uh, yeah, so eating turkey legs with um, Trevor Ward, Mooney, McCaffrey, Debo, Bosa, Fred, myself, and I'm missing somebody. I say CMC. But uh, I've had pretty. Yeah, and just having that group to have turkey legs on Thanksgiving, that's fun because you don't get that opportunity very often. And, you know, I got I also got asked about, you know, what's it like playing on Thanksgiving? You know, um, is it suck work, you know, playing on the holidays? I was like, I play football. I, I play on every holiday. I play on all the major holidays except for uh, Fourth of July, baby. U.S. of A, baby. And um, <clears throat> so I, I was appreciative of the very – this is my first opportunity being to play on Thanksgiving. And I just remember growing up and watching John Madden uh, cut the turkey. For sure. Uh, and I just have awesome memories of watching football on Thanksgiving and being with family, enjoying it, uh, usually watching the Detroit Lions or Dallas Cowboys. So this time being able to be a part of it with a John Madden patch was also really sick. So overall, I thoroughly enjoyed playing on Thursday Night Football. Yeah. Well, very cool. So, well, we're certainly excited about the win and where everybody's sitting. So before we move on, any – any kind of big lessons out of that one or just, I mean, it's a win. I know we had people are a little nicked up. We've got that going on and uh, just stay years. resilient and just keep chugging along. Keep your wits about you. The one good thing about, um, you know, like one of the things I take away from it, Seattle's a very, very hostile environment, especially in a night game. That crowd wants to get into it. They love their Seattle Seahawks. They hate us. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's awesome. I love that. I love that for us. Um, it's a fantastic place to play. Hi, Deanie. You're so cute. And so to be able to go into a hostile environment and win and play at a high level as our team. And like, like you said, the third quarter was a little, whoa, what's going on? Um, but our defense, you know, stepped up and our offense figured it out. We were able to go down, you know, extend the lead a little bit. So it's always good for the Niners. Well, honestly, I thought that was really good. I mean, that you haven't had a bunch of those games. I mean, you know, in some of the earlier games, we didn't quite come out where we wanted to, but in this one, that closeness and then finishing it, I mean, that's how playoff runs are made. You know, you got to be able to execute, get your back pushed a little bit, and then come back and uh, take care of business. So the, and the defense really showed up, as did uh, offense. Uh, Brock and I, Yuk on that last one and pulling everything together. So really cool. Okay, let me do the NFC West. Wait, wait, wait. I have a question. I have a question. How was the turkey actually? It was actually pretty good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was warm, yeah. And then I had um, oh, hey, Dini. Uh, the turkey was still warm. Uh, the cornbread was delicious. That was still warm. Ooh. Um, so yeah, I had a leg and a piece of cornbread, and then I stole the whole turkey and I threw the leg into the stands. The fan dropped it. it. He dropped it at first, and I picked it up and I threw it back in. He caught it. I think he took a bite out of it. So good for you, man. Yeah, you were getting play-by-play analysis on the TV with that. It was oh. pretty cool. It's crazy how many cameras are out there in football. Oh, my gosh. It is really crazy. So very, very fun. Okay. Um, so let me just do NFC West standings, kind of what we care about. Niners 8-3 and three beat Seattle. We know that at the Eagles 10-1. and one. They beat the Bills in overtime last week, 37-34 with a walk-off. Okay. Seattle, we know they lost to the Niners. All right. We're going to see them in two weeks. So here we go. They are at the Cowboys right now playing. And the Cowboys are 8-3, and three, and they beat the pants off of Washington the week before. Rams. Five and six beat Arizona 37-14. They are this week at the Browns, who are seven and four and lost to Denver pretty handily, 12 to 29. All right, cards two and ten, lost to Rams there at Pittsburgh, who are seven and four after beating the Bengals 17 to 10. So that's the NFC West. Sitting pretty comfortably there, but a lot of games left to play and a lot of action. We're going to see Seattle again. And so we got a lot going on. All right. Emma, anything else on the NFC West or the previous game? No, I mean uh, NFC I'm West, really... I got one. Go oh. ahead, George. Um, Zach Ertz uh, asked for his release today and is now released, no longer an Arizona Cardinal. So he is a free agent as long as he clears waivers today, um, which I think he, I think he will. 
um, and he'll be able to sign with a team of his choice, which so that will be interesting. Yes, Emma. Can you uh, football one on one this, please? I want like a football one on one button. So why would somebody do that, and what what does it mean? Uh, well, Zach Ertz is a vet. Um, he's won a Super Bowl before. He's played at a, he plays at a high level, um, and he's still playing well. Um, he he asked. This is what I, I mean. I, I this is just what I found out on via Twitter, like everybody else does. Um, he asked for his release just so, cause he didn't really want to play with the Cardinals anymore. Um, I think they, you know, they have two, maybe three wins. Um, but he would like to play for a Super Bowl contender. And I don't know if that means like, Hey, in the next year or so he might retire. So, you know, just wants to play some high quality ball and, um, feels like he has better options elsewhere. So he, I think he sacrificed a pace check right. this week is what. I read on Twitter, so he's like, you don't have to pay me this week. You release me, and I'll be off. Uh, and, and so they did that for him, which is a cool move for the Cardinals. I respect that. And yeah. um, so here he is now as a free agent and waivers. So when a player is released, there's an order, like kind of a draft pick order, and it switches every week. Yeah, like if it, So like let's just say Zach Ertz it becomes a free agent. Who's ever at the top of the list, whether it like it could be the Patriots, the Steelers, the Niners, whoever it is, let's just say they pick him up. Once you pick somebody up, you go back to the bottom of the list and it moves up. So like throughout the season, the list is constantly changing. And like, let's say the first couple of teams don't want him, but the fourth team does, they pick him up, they rotate out. And so that's kind of how uh, waivers works. So, uh, but I think right now he has like 2.5 million attached to him. So if someone picks him up, they have to pay him 2.5 million. If he clears waivers, that means he's a completely unrestricted free agent, meaning he has no contract, so he can sign a new deal with any team. For whatever amount. Yes, for whatever amount. Yeah. So it'd be great probably for him to clear waivers and not get picked up with anything, and then he could pick the team he wants if he could work something out. But, yeah, he's got to be thinking kind of like that with the injury he had last year and just, you know, you only yeah. have so many seasons left. Because he's in year 12, is it? Something like that. He's played yeah, for a minute, he's, but he's, I mean, like I said, he's still playing at a high level. Like he's still yeah. getting open. He's still running good routes. Um, off the top of my head, the two teams that stand out, why not go back to Philly? You know, that's where it started. Go back home. Uh, or you go to the Ravens. You know, they lost Mark Andrews for a foreseeable amount of time. Um, and Zach, like I I mean, he, he runs routes and catches the ball pretty damn well. Yeah. I mean, Stuff he was doing with Philly there in his prime years. I mean, catching a lot of balls. So that's interesting. Okay, cool. Well, that's a neat update. All right. Uh, any other NFL updates, George? Like, that's pretty cool. I like it. I did. Um, it was funny. J.J. Watt is the one that announced it instead of, like, you know, Ian Rappaport or, you know, one of those guys. And uh, I texted Zach and I said, hey, when you choose a team that you're signing with, can I do the breaking news? And he said, he said he'd think about it. So hopefully I, <laughs> that'd be fun for me to, and I, I would do it through tight end you. Right. Yeah. So tight ends, is going to break the news about tight ends. That would be cool that we should do that anyway. We need more tight ends to buy into that. Well, JJ made a really good point on this tweet. He was just like, I don't get what's so hard about this. Why do you guys, like, why do you guys have a job? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Well, you're just about like, breaking the news, you mean? <laughs> yeah, like breaking the news. He's like, they could just break their own news. Like, why do you guys get paid to break the news? Yeah, this insider like, info stuff. Yeah. It's, hey, you know what? It's it's a business. And they do a great job with it. I, I Ian does a great job with it. He was disappointed when I did my contract. I let part of my take do the breaking news. Right. And he was like, you're really making me wait for this, even though I could have the tweet ready to go. And I was like, dude, relax, man. You don't always have to be first. Yeah, that's why he's the guy, though. So, well, cool. Well, we wish uh, Zach all the best, unless he's with the Eagles, and then maybe not. But anyway, okay, perfect. I, I love you guys. You guys are great. <laughs> hey, I don't have to be all fair and square and all that bullshit. I got you one, do not, man. I got you one. Do not. I got one goal in mind, and that's what we got. And I don't give a shit who gets in the way. We're coming. We are coming, and we are coming. Okay, then let's. Shall we talk? Fly Eagles, fly. Sure. Okay, uh, let's see. You, you want to run through? I got a couple things there for you, George. You got the script, or you want me to prime the pump? Prime it, dog. It's all you. All you right. Love talking, you love Eagles. talking stats. All right, Eagles, they are 10-1. and one. 
all time. I just love these anyway. We've played them 37 times over the years. The Niners lead the series 21 to 14 with one tie. Niners are 10, 6, and 1 all time in road games to Philly, which I thought was pretty cool. I didn't know that, including a 17 11 victory back in 2021. Obviously, we played them last time in the NFC Championship game, kind of marking that one up to what it was. Okay. Anyway, GK, 21 catches for 222 yards, scored one TD in three games against the Eagles over your career. So we're looking to pad those stats, but most importantly, get the win. So I guess we've got that. I got a bunch of stats between. Jalen and all that kind of stuff. We can get rolling into that. You've been in practice this week. You guys have your game plan. I know you're not going to say too much, but what are some of the key things around the Eagles that are important to you for us to chat about tonight? And then we can kind of roll back into stats. Um, let's see. I think interesting things. Is, one of the most is um, their defense coordinator is now the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. So they brought in the Seattle Seahawks defense coordinator, who we played three times last year um and did win all three of those games so that i thought that was interesting when i learned that um because i was i didn't know that's who they did hire um so you know that has its own little tricks and stuff to it as well i would say um the fact that one of their starting linebackers has a hammy injury that he sustained versus the bills and also fletcher cox is dealing with a groin to a certain extent I have the full um, injury report listed if you want to go through it, but I don't want, I don't, I, I, I don't have, I don't have that. Okay, go. Time. All right, go. All right, you go. Um, so those are two interesting things as a fan, just watching the game. Um, their edge guys are really talented and, um, sweat and Reddick. Uh, yep. I think they, they do a really good job. Uh, they're fast, they're explosive, violent. They do a great job. Um, and their secondary is sound. Uh, while like I think the stats, you know, probably blow them up or they're not doing too good. Uh, they're ranked right. probably not high. Um, when you're playing in a link, anything can happen, man. It's a home game. It's uh, there's a lot going on. So I don't really take, I, I really don't take those things into account. All I know is that I have to show up on Sunday and play the best of my ability. So the Niners have a chance to win. I think yeah. uh, I feel like that's our kind of our whole team thing. It's just everyone's just trying to be up, show up every single day, be our best and focus on one game at a time. But uh, other things about the Eagles defense, um, when you lose a linebacker, it kind of changes how you play the game, uh, whether you're playing base defense or you're playing nickel. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what they do. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing if they just have an extra DB in or they're going to bring up one of their uh, backup linebackers uh, to go against us. So I, I find that um, exciting and very intriguing. Right. Yeah, so you said Fletcher. So he's with a groin, unlikely to play. They're saying, and the linebacker you mentioned, strong safety Justin Evans out with a knee, and both Dad, tight ends. I, I both, just said, I just said you can't go through it all. I'm not. I was just doing the guys who didn't practice today, and both tight ends didn't practice. So anyway, uh, but the one guy that didn't play last week was in concussion. Milton Williams. He's the other inside DT. He is going to play. So that's all good. Okay, uh, like all that. Anything else you want to add? Or you? I know you're dying for some more stats, probably. I'll skip over the – there were seven players for the Eagles who were in the top 100 preseason. We kind of – we can all kind of figure that out. Uh, I, I, I I, wanna... I'm looking at the script right now, Dad. You're yeah. amazing. The amount of stats. It's that dense. You it's dense tonight. Well, Not everybody can um, see these Bruce Kittle stat scripts, but um, – <laughs> There's a page of just – You should have just worked for ESPN, man. You should have just gone and worked and been a stat guy. My guy. You have been so happy – I'm trying to get a job back on the radio, man. I got, you know, like, anyway. Okay, well, let me just do Purdy, okay? Because I think this is really interesting, and a lot of people will be surprised by this. Okay, just this is all we'll do. Okay, because I do want to say this, though, Georgia, about the team stats. They're kind of interesting. Like, in the ranking, like, the Eagles are 29th in the league out of 32 teams in pass defense, but they're 10-1. and They know how to play and win, and they've found a way to do it. So I'm with you at this time in the season. Stats really don't tell us a whole lot. Okay. All right. But before, before you get to the stats, because I I'm know. I'm not going to. I'm I not know, going to. But okay. the thing, I, I talk about the Eagles defense. The offense oh, yeah, is no. why they're, like, they're putting up points, and their offense is very, very, um, what am I trying to say? Their offense is, like, um, meticulous and it's unique and they're really good at running it. And Jalen hurts is really, really, really good at being the quarterback of that and how they do everything. It's, they have this mindset about them. They have this confidence to them and you can see it off the tape. You can see it. They're just confident in themselves as a team. 
And while they're not, you know, like A.J. Brown's fantastic. Devonta Smith is really good. Their running back's playing at a high level. I know Goddard's been out a couple weeks with a broken forearm. He'll be back, but he's really good football. He's a fantastic tight end. Um, like Jalen Hurts is – he is so good at organizing and orchestrating their offense, and he plays it so well. And then they have a really, really talented offensive line all across the board. And so while, like, all the stats might not be the prettiest, they're 10-1. and one. They went into Kansas City and won. They beat Dallas at home. They got – they just won this last week versus the Bills in OT. Like, they all they do is just find ways to win, and that's what makes a good football team. I'm with you. That's exactly – I totally agree with you on that. So – and they, it's really interesting, too, that we are really close. All the stat stuff really is a pretty much a wash because we are super even with them all the way across the board. But I just thought for people would really be interested, the Brock Purdy versus Jalen Hurts thing, just briefly, other than rushing – total rushing yards, Brock leads in every – category so total yards you know it's not a big difference but you know he's right there 2800 or 2800 versus 2600 completion percentage same thing yards per passing same thing he's a notch head and this is the one that surprised me tds and ints so brock's got 19 tds to 18 for jalen and brock's got six interceptions versus 10 for jalen so i just mean you know when anyway the are brock you saying Purdy, that you th- are you saying that brock Purdy should be in the mvp conversation I'm saying Brock Purdy is playing at a really high level. And, that you know, is. and just what you said, like about Jalen in that huddle, I mean, and you've been saying this all along, but I think people are just starting to believe it. You know, Brock has a presence to him and a calmness in the face of a lot of shit. And when I went back and watched it, Seattle, you know, he's under, I mean, they didn't sack him, a lot, you know, but they, he got hit several times yeah. pretty significantly. And the balls he threw on those plays when he got hit, they were major completions. They were strikes, like strikes. dots, as Brandon Ike would say. They were dots. So I'm just going to say this: if if he's not in the MVP conversation, he should be in the Golden Canucks conversation because my man has got big brass balls, and he stands in there and throws. He's got great movement in the pocket, and he reads the secondaries really well. And what he does with you guys in that huddle, and you spoke about this, but I just think that there's there's a little magic and there's a little mojo full in both, I think, our Niner D and the Niner offense. And you can kind of feel it coming back, and it feels really good right now. So I think that's really cool. So anyway, all hats off to Jay. You're right, though, about what they've done and where they've gone. And winning in Kansas City is not easy, obviously, and all the things that they've done to get there and the way in which they keep winning. So it's going to be a great game. We're super excited about it. Really fun. Okay, I'm going to skip the injury thing. Okay, how about this then? Let's just talk any other keys to victory on your part. Just in a shout-out, I just checked it today. So weather, mid-50s. Uh, tapering off is the evening, so it's a 425 kickoff out there, and it's supposed to start raining somewhere around halftime. So it's kind of a cloudy, wet, rainy day, played on true grass turf. So that's going to be kind of exciting. So tell us a little bit about the grass. How does the weather impact the game, if at all? And what are you thinking in your head for keys to victory? Um, I think it is a nice grass field. That's how I remember it last year, the last couple times I played on it. I've, I don't think I have any issues with it, so I'm looking forward to that. Always have a good grass field. Um, weather, Hey, it's football, baby. It's football in December. It's the East coast. You're going to get what you get. And, uh, you know, whether it's home field advantage or whatever it is, it's football weather, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it, whatever is raining down on us, whatever is bearing down on us, it's football weather. You just got to have that mindset and just not care. Yeah. And, you know, that might change up like what gloves you're wearing. You know, the leather gloves are really nice in the rain and, um, uh, We'll figure that out as the time comes, but I would say keys to victory. <sighs> Run the ball, protect Purdy, don't turn the ball over. Bam. And then Nick Bosa go off. Let the boys eat. Let the boys eat. Do you think eat. he actually doesn't eat carbs after any game? Like he just eats meat? That's I think what he so. said on the broadcast. Yeah, I think so. He's like, no, no, no. I don't think he eats carbs. I don't, like, I don't know what I haven't seen him eat breakfast in a while, but he used to literally just go get a big to go box of broccoli. That was what his was breakfast. That? Was it Ooh. with like a, maybe a protein shake. Yeah. Hmm. But Nick Bosa is, um, he's a, he's, he's a wonder of the world. He's unique. <laughs> he's interesting. He's a bear. He's a little bear. He's little, he's little, he's smaller bear. Smaller bear. Smaller bear. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he plays for yeah, us. Nick Bosa is my key to victory. 
Perfect. Well, it should be fun. It should be fun to see him going off. And shout out to all those guys. I mean, Eric's played really well, and it's great to have Chase along. He just brings a whole different presence out there, and the yeah. whole crew. And, and Fred's been going off. I mean, Fred is all freaking over, and everybody's been stepping up, so it's really good. So just keep playing what we've been doing, and I think you really nailed the keys to victory, especially in a wet, rainy day. So no turnovers, run the hell out of the ball, and it'll all take care of itself, right? Keep Brock up. So, okay. All right, Emmy, any other game things you got? Do you want to do? Mm. Uh, do you want to jump into Ask George and or the one my football one hundred and one? Do you have any questions for us today? Um, actually, no, we don't have any questions, and I'm really sorry about that, guys. Uh, we uh, we have our Hidden Pearl Studio drop, and I just straight up forgot to post about the Ask George thing. So, and I've run through what? all of my questions. I know. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I know. I know. At seven o'clock, when we were like, all right, we're on at seven thirty. I was like, oh. I literally have a post-it note on my computer that I was supposed to do that. So I apologize, GK, our community. Uh, uh, uh. I'll post one tomorrow after the show gets out. Oh, we did talk about waivers, though. For those for those of you that are listening to this podcast, I am making a grumpy sad face. And I am disappointed in my sister. Because I like your guys' questions. I think you guys do a great job. But I am sad. I did get one question on Instagram. I did. Okay, I can't no. see your face. You're blurry right now, George. He's being I did pouty. get one sassy question on Instagram, but I wasn't going to bring it up, but there was one. Did you and Christian ever um, do you get, does Christian ever give you shit about the Rose Bowl? No. I've gotten that question multiple times, actually. <laughs> um, No. I mean, he has every right to, but he never has because um he won the game and he had an amazing game he set every single rose bowl record possible yep. but what people don't know is that christian actually came to me before the game and asked me to talk to kirk about letting him break all the records and we we're just mm -hmm. like you know what anything for you christian so he, he, he asked really politely yeah he has he's just such a nice guy we we're just like fine we'll give you one-on-one -on -one matchups versus injured players it's fine yeah that's exactly anyway, what we did. Anyway, that's another thing. Okay. Well, Am, since you brought it up, we, we have had a really big uh, kind of drop of recent. We've kind of talked about it. So the Hidden Pearl Studio app has launched. It is available on the App Store. So you can just search Hidden Pearl Studio. Uh, there's a Ooh. variety of different subscription options. Uh, and so all those things are kind of running. And actually, we're in the first 100 of those subscriptions. And so we've got a couple bonus options em if you want to talk about that for the first 100 subscribers do you have a couple things that you want to share with that yes definitely um so one of the reasons why we launched hidden pearl studio is because a lot of the work that i was doing with my one-on-one -on -one clients i was getting to a point where um, it was time for them to spread their wings and create their own personal practices and really focus in on their habits and their routines and all these, you know. And so I was finding that I was getting a lot better results with people when I would send them videos. And so I was either making everyone individual videos or finding them videos online. And since I couldn't really find a set to have like a common theme, I decided to create it. And so that's really what Hidden Pearl Studio is, is it's a collection of all the practices that have helped me through my really big life transitions. It's the practices that taught George how to do his meditations on the field. Um, it's the practices that help us be really kind to each other as a family. And it's really what I feel like got us through COVID while still really liking each other and caring about each other. And so, um, yeah, so, so George says, that's kind of. <laughs> but either way, kind of. so a lot of these practices, um, so every month we have a common theme and for December, we're really focusing on gratitude and what that means. And so for December, we're also doing a lot on digestion just as we come to the end of the year. Like how can you fully how can you fully process and digest and take what you need and leave what you don't um, from 2023 as we move into 2024? And so as, you know, now we're getting to this point where our community is starting to launch its own wings. And so as a celebration of that, what we'd like to do is offer the first 100 people who sign up with an annual membership. Um, we're going to grandfather or grandmother you in um, at $100 off your annual membership. And so if you are interested in doing that, I have the link in the bio. And that means like any of the other workshops, any of the stuff that we do, you guys are going to get that with your annual membership. Um, 
And yeah, I think that's, that's all awesome, there, Emma. Right? Thanks, George. You heard it here first, guys. First 100 people, $100 off your annual membership. You get to see fun stuff from Emma, from Bruce, and a little bit here and there from me. So get your life in order, breathe, learn how to breathe, and get a lot of good vibes. You guys are going to enjoy it. I promise. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, join the tribe. Exactly. That's what we're doing. So we're going to go through and learn, grow, and uh, be the very best people we can be and try to work it out together. So very good. Cool. Um, I'm going to just, uh, let's see. I don't know if we have a Dini wine shoes or food. I have something. Okay. On you, George. Pretty, you go. I, was on pretty, it, sir. I was pretty excited about this. You guys know how I love my sneakers. If you can't tell, I love them. Um, I have some sneakers I really want to show you guys, but then these bad boys just came out and I found them and I purchased them and I've been wearing them all week. So watch out. Um, these bad boys are pretty unique and they're beautiful. Okay. <laughs> these are my <laughs> lightning McQueen Crocs. And look, what are they called? They're lightning McQueen. The car from cars. Uh, car, right. Okay. Yeah. So he's lightning McQueen and every step they light up. They light up. Oh, they light up on every step. And which is actually kind of funny. Someone pointed this out to me is lightning McQueen stick. He, his lights in the movies are stickers. So he doesn't really light up, but Ooh. fun fact, but I appreciate these. And yes, I rock these. Um, these are amazing. I leave mine in sport mode because um, anyone can get it at any moment and I'm ready right. for them. I like it. Okay. I will Lightning say McQueen. I uh I got into my I got my first pair of Crocs ever this year and they are incredibly comfortable. They're nice. They are really nice. And then anyone else that's listening, if you guys can um help me, um I usually do a care package um Christmas gift for the tight end room. And I have a couple of things sorted. But if you guys have any ideas for other things that I can get the San Francisco 49ers tight ends players and to our two coaches. Let me know, and uh, if uh, if I like your idea, I'll tell you that I used it. That's a great idea, and we can submit that. If you guys are listening, I will put a link for you to submit tight end gift suggestions. That'd be cool. There are six players and two coaches. Two, yeah, okay, eight folks. I like it. Very, very cool. I love it. That's what's the best? What's your uh, do you have any like favorite presents that you've received from the tight end room? Just maybe as an idea or is it like someone that something that someone else has gotten me? Yeah. Or like that you've given like a favorite gift that's been exchanged in the tight end room. Well, like, so we do a white elephant thing uh, with like a minimum and then I just get everyone a care package of certain things that I like and everybody gets it. That's what I'm asking for. I'm not, I have my gift, mm -hmm. my solo gift picked out already. So like a oh. wine and cheese basket or just yeah, like, like a couple years ago, I got like a nice leather red travel bag and then I stuffed it full of like zinnies and chubbies and uh, like sponsored stuff that I, I get to do, but I've gifted a lot of that stuff already this year. So I don't want to give them too much of the same stuff. So I'm looking at other options. And like I said, I have like, I have two things picked out, but I like to get to like four or five. So I need a couple more ideas. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. You over maybe there? Crocs. Give me your ideas. Maybe, maybe Crocs. Ideas. Okay. Well, send them in. So any in the same thing, you can always submit Ask George and Football 101 questions and or we're looking for the tight end room. So uh, we're going to come back to the mindfulness in a moment. I just want to touch base. Everybody knows that we've been doing tickets. Right now we are about 250 veteran tickets for the season, which is pretty cool. So uh, that's last this year? year? This year. But no, that's Twerk. total. Oh, okay. I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> No, this year we're. Damn, Bruce. I don't know. We're. Bam. Bam. That's like 60, ten a game, dog. No. Sixty. Plus That's like so, twenty yeah. a game. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yeah. Well, we did. Uh, well, two weeks ago we did twenty-two tickets, and then the week before that ten. But anyway, the last week we had uh, emergency vets and players there for four, uh, up in Seattle, and it, and just um, and I just did this in a moment because the holidays and everything, and usually really happy time. Um, a very good friend of ours, not, I'm going to not mention a name, but a uh, combat veteran who'd been on the show, actually. And uh, anyway, lost him a few weeks ago. And uh, so we were able to bring his brother 
uh, and some of their family. And that was pretty cool. And then two other vets from MVP Seattle. So just a reminder to uh, holidays can be tough and uh, make sure we're reaching out and trying to spread the love. So we are, our hearts and thoughts go out to them. And actually uh, the seventh is uh, their memorial service there in celebration of life. So our, our best to the family. Uh, then we were able to bring actually a family member, Green Beret, Simon Gratch uh, on Jan's side of the family. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, that was fun. Anyway, that was fun. So and brought family and all that kind of stuff. So we had uh, 10 folks there last week. And then this week we are bringing four uh, veterans from the Philadelphia area. And they are all members of the organization Irreverent Warriors. So uh, we're glad to partner with them again. And so that's pretty cool. So glad to do that. Uh, last week, our charity of the week was MVP Seattle. This week, we're helping with Irreverent Warriors. And I just want to shout out, I got my t-shirt on. So Cafe Momentum, we've been a supporter with them for a couple years now. So it's a kind of juvenile detention youth program where they teach kids how to run a restaurant and actually with chef training. So if you're interested in that, uh, they have Dallas, I think Pittsburgh and Nashville. And uh, anyway, we'll post a link on Cafe Momentum uh, for that as well. Then last, George, I just wanted to give you uh, this weekend is the Cleats for a Cause weekend. My cause, uh, my cleats. My cause, my. OK, well, I'm cleating for a cause. You can my cause your whatever. All right, go. Well, tell us a little bit about and uh, we'll try to. We've got a couple picks. I don't have one here for the show, but we can add one later for people that look at. But anyway, tell us a little bit about your cause for a cleat and uh, <laughs> what you're doing. Um, well, every year for my cause, my cleats, I usually do a, um, a military charity. Um, that's usually what I work with. Huge fan. Um, you know, I've got to work with TAPS, USAA, um, MVP, Emerging Vets Players. This year, we are working with Operation Freedom Paws. And we've talked about them often. Uh, we've done a lot of work with them. They train dogs uh, to be service to be service animals for vets. It's also it's dogs and veterans, military members. It's literally an amazing idea, and the um, any chance I can do to help them out to connect um, people with dogs just in general, that is a worthy worthy cause. It is incredibly helpful. Dogs bring so much joy, happiness, comfort um relaxation um to everybody's lives dogs are fantastic and especially really really well trained ones that uh know exactly what you know they're doing and so that's pretty cool it's not pretty cool it's, it's fucking amazing so i'm really excited about working with them the cleats are really cool my guy from uh new my guy from the east coast i think it's new jersey or new york i can't remember i sent him a bunch of cleats sorry my guy but uh stomping ground customs you can find him on instagram he designed them I buy shoes from them. He does a lot of my cleats, but he did my uh, Operation Freedom Paws cleats. So uh, very stoked about that and getting to wear them. Very cool. And just on that, all the dogs that are trained are rescued. Yes, that's another highlight. They're rescued so dogs. Yeah, so they're actually, so they're saving lives on both ends. So uh, four both paws, ends of the leash. Four paws, two feet, and one mission. One mission. Bam. Okay. So that's really good. And then I'm just going to another shout out. We've got a little bit more time to vote for George for salute to service nomination. It's late tonight is the last night. So I don't know if people are going to, they probably won't. Well, yep. then we want to say thank you to everybody that did vote. Thank you yeah. to everyone for voting. Yep. And so All right. what can good. they vote for now, George? Pro Robo. Um, I know that I, we would love for you guys vote for me, please. I love going to the Pro Bowl. Um, <laughs> hopefully we're not there this year, but I love being um, – it's, it's an incredible award, an incredible honor to be voted um, to go to the Pro Bowl. Um, and, yeah, I think I'm, I'm playing at a pretty high level. So I, I, I would like that for you guys to vote me in. Um, there's other guys on the Niners. Like, obviously, you know, you look at our whole defense, there's guys all over that. You know, I feel like Eric Armstead is much deserving this year. You guys are obviously going to vote for Fred. You're going to – you know, you're going to vote for Charvarius Ward, phenomenal, Dre Greenlaw, Javon Hargrave, Nick Bosa, um, Chase Young. That's crazy. But, like, we have a lot of guys that are, you know, you know, get get my guy Gibson in there to our safety, 31. And, you know, also, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, our whole defense. And then you look at our offenses, guys all over the field. But, um, you know, one guy that I think really deserves to get an opportunity to go to the Pro Bowl, Mitch Wisnowski, our punter. He is having himself quite the season. 
playing very well. Um, phenomenal. So, yeah, he he's incredible. His punts inside the ten are phenomenal. He is he is a, he's a he's a lethal 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 punter. Um, forced to fumble. You know, kicked one of those banana guys to Seattle last week. Guy drops it. Charlie Warner knocks him out and balls on the ground. Ronnie Bell picks it up. So, also, unfortunate that George Odom is injured. But for some reason, I think they, he said that they took him off the Pro Bowl voting because he's on IR. But I think our next guy for special teams would be Charlie Warner because he's having himself a pretty good year on special teams. So, if he is the option, vote for my guy, Charlie Warner. Bam. All right, there you go. That's the Pro Bowl update. So very good. So we're excited. Hi, about mom. I, I see mom. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> She's slipping me notes. Make sure we get it right. Okay, that is all great. So perfect. Most we're on to the quote of the week. We got quote of the week, and then we usually talk a little bit about mindfulness, George. Anything that's come up for you this week? Just maybe a moment or something of awareness, or just any way in which breath or something else played into your into your life or your game? Oh, first thing that comes to my head. Um, I get, I've been, I've been asked since January about, you know, the NFC championship game and, you know, throughout the whole off season, I get asked about it. You know, do you have this game circle on your calendar? All this stuff. I had my media scrum today in front of my locker and got multiple questions about the NFC championship game. You know, what does this game mean? And all yada, yada, yada. And it's just, to take a deep breath and to realize that nothing that happened last year makes me think any one way or another at Philadelphia. The importance of this game is the fact that they are the one seed and we want to be the one seed and we need to get a win against uh, the best team in the NFL record wise. I mean, they're, they're 10 and one, you know, they've won games against incredible teams. So, that is my goal. I want to win this game solely for the fact that we get closer to being the one seed and getting home field advantage in the playoffs. That's what I want. It has nothing to do with anything that's happened in last year. And I'm, I, I'm, I like that I am mindful enough and aware that it's a new season. And um, it is, when you guys listen to this, it's going to be December 1st. And that is almost 12 months later. So, yes, I'm good. I'm excited to play the Eagles. But the the show that and the spectacle that people are making it, besides just being a really good matchup in the 2023 season, it's a little over the top. But it will be a fun game to watch. That's how I look at it. So any of the talk that was had, you know, previous weeks, months, it is what it is. It's uh, Sunday Sunday, early evening football. Coming at you. Let's go. Well, I first, do you have any uh, mindfulness practices that you're going to be practicing as you interact with Philly fans? Yeah, you right there, young man. Uh, I will indeed. Uh, Other than having massive security teams around me everywhere I go. No, I won't do that. But, um, you know, just taking a breath or two and trying to keep perspective. And like you said, you know, one, as excited and as much as I love football, it's a football game. You know what I mean? There's in the real world, there's a lot of other shit going on. That's pretty serious. So I'm grateful to be there. I'm grateful that the game still matters. I'm grateful that the Niners have this opportunity and I'm the same with you, George, it kind of flushed what happened last year. Cause really it's kind of a abnorm- abnormal. Well, I got asked that today. You're like, well, how long did it take you to flush the game? And I was like, I don't know. It happened 12 months ago. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm in week thir- I'm in week thirteen of twenty twenty three, man. I have other things that are significantly more important to me I, than thinking George, about that. I'm not even I won't mention any reporters' names, but they like can't tell you how many I've read, like, you know, this great man they've been waiting for all this time for a rematch and revenge and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like it's like the dumbest thing I've heard because it's so different. Cause the two teams are different, you know, and the situation's different. And it's like it's this year and we're also playing, also we're no future. matter what happens, I'm playing football next Sunday. Yeah, it's not an NFC Championship game. Yeah, hey, maybe the stakes will be a little higher if we play in the if we, you know we're playing in the playoffs and such like that. I understand that. That's that's different. That's win or go home. There's a lot right. that can happen this year still. Right. 
You got six games left and then a lot, a lot of ball left to play. So that's really cool. I appreciate that perspective. So, but I, and I will be being very aware. And so I really appreciate that. And the great thing about that is that mindfulness helps us with our breath work to let the past be the past and let it set down. I mean, the one thing about it is you can't let the last play influence the next one. So we want to be in the present moment, doing our very best you with an not. eye toward the future that we want to create and taking steps toward becoming the person and the team and all that stuff that we want to be. So Emmy, anything you want to share? I know you've been super mindful of doing the app and all the kind of things and inviting the tribes, but uh, if you don't want to share something and or we can swing in, we do have the quote. And if you want to, you want to look at it, Em? Yes, I do have a mindfulness thing. Um, okay. I think, uh, you know, well, yeah, sending all of you guys much love as you travel. I think the thing that I like really remember about this game is just like, I feel like people are so reactive. And I think even just this conversation right now is a reminder about how much the media can kind of stoke that fire in thinking that we have to be really angry or thinking that we have to be really mean or that we have to be like assholes to each other. And you don't. Right. And so just a reminder for all of us who are getting ready to go to the game that you have a choice on how you're going to show up and you have a choice on how you're going to be treating other people and you have a choice on how you're going to influence the energy. And so if, you know, things are getting out of hand, it's totally okay to take a breath, walk away for a little bit and circle back. So just because the media is telling us to be all worked up and that we have to hate the Eagles, I'm not going to tell you not to hate them, but you know, you don't have to spread any more kind of tenacious energy around. And I think that leads right into the quote. Yeah. Um, this is actually one that we sent out on our newsletter. So if you're not attached to the newsletter yet, you can do that through our website. But it says, um, day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. So if you choose chaos, if you choose chaos, if you think chaos, you're gonna become chaos. Oh, good job, George. Look at that. 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 All right. And then the other one that we have up here is if unresolved trauma can store itself in your muscles, fascia, organs, cells, and the rest of your physical body, so can joy, gratitude, abundance, love, and peace. Your body is also a safe place. Those are good ones, Dad. Uh, yeah. I really like that one. We talk all the time in our mindfulness classes and the work that the mind likes to dump all its BS into the body and it causes tension, stress, illness, dis-ease, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is we can change kind of the way in which our brain works by thinking about positive things and sending love and energy out there instead of stressing on things and filling ourselves with kind of hate and all that kind of stuff. And so we can then have our mind push all that love and joy and kindness and inclusion uh, into the body and then the body's all happy and not tense. So there you go. So change those neural snaps. The neural With snaps. The, get the neural snaps. So, all right, very good. George, last words, any uh, hidden pearls that you've long along the way? Or have you hidden pearled this out? ka -chow. I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. Well, uh, welcome everybody. My hidden pearl was uh, putting a light up on a little evergreen tree that's out in front of our house and we live out in the acreage and it's just out there by itself in the snow and the wind, but it is so pretty at night. And I, that's one part of the holiday season. I, little white lights on evergreen trees outside in the snow is pretty cool. So anyway, all right, well, much love. Emmy, anything? Are you good? We signing off? Um, mine is that on the second Tuesday of December, we're having our very first Hidden Pearls studio uh, live mindfulness workshop. And so I'm very excited to lead that with all of our members. And if you guys have any questions about that, I will post it in the comments, but I'm just really excited to kind of get this whole thing rolling. So with that, Niner fans, thank you for signing in. George, Bruce, love you very much. Mom, I see you in the background, LOL. Um, thank you for showing up. Happy holidays, everyone, and go Niners. Love you, Georgie. Love you, I mean, Travel safe, Georgie. We'll see you in Philly. Love you guys. Ka-chow.